Hi, it's Michelle from Lab Muffin Beauty Science, Chemistry PhD and Skincare Nerd who doesn't seem to exist below this level. But yeah, I have a body and today I'm going to be talking about some of my best tips for looking after the skin on your body. If you like nerding out about beauty, click the like, the subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. Skincare for your body is like skincare for your face in a lot of ways, but also not in a lot of other ways. My first tip is to pick actives for your body skincare just like you pick actives for your face skincare. I think a lot of us use lots of actives on our faces, but we sort of ignore our bodies. But there are lots of really good body products on the market, so I thought I'd tell you about some of the ones that I've been using lately that I've been really liking. I'm going to start with this video sponsor, Necessaire. I talked about their body wash in my 2019 skincare favourites. I really like it because it's good for cleansing your skin without stripping it. And it's got this really cute twist top. Since then I've also tried some of their leave-on products, so the body serum and the body lotion. These have the sorts of actives that you see in face products, they're really minimalist, they have really great textures, and they're fragrance free. My skin is fine with fragrance and I personally like having a pleasant scent, especially when I'm using body products, but I know a lot of people can't tolerate fragrance and it can be hard to find fragrance free body products, so it's really good that these are available. The textures are also really light, which I love. A lot of body products can be really heavy and sticky and they take ages to sink in. These three all have niacinamide, which is one of my favourite skincare ingredients. It's vitamin B3 and it's really good for sensitive skin. There's also my favourite humectant glycerin, which is really good at keeping your skin hydrated. And it's especially good in cleansers because it helps prevent your cleanser from stripping your skin. Cleansing is one of the harshest steps in your routine and your natural moisturising factor, the NMF, which is naturally in your skin, it's a natural humectant, that can get washed away. So having glycerin in there stops your skin from getting that tight, itchy, dry feeling that you can sometimes get, especially if you like hot showers, which I do. The serum has hyaluronic acid, which is another really good humectant moisturiser. It can be hard to find body products that have hyaluronic acid, so this is really good for that. On its own, it's already really good, but if you pair it with a lotion to lock in the moisture, then it sort of supercharges it and it makes your skin really, really hydrated. If you want to try their products, you can use Lab Muffin 10 for 10% off. Another brand I really like for body products is Bioderma. They have a lot of really hydrating, really soothing products, and they use a lot of patented technologies in them. I talked about their shower oil before, which is really, really lovely in winter, but it's not available in Australia, but this is also really good. This is a shower gel. It's in the Atoderm range, which is for really sensitive skin. So this one is fragrance free. It's also got lots of moisturizing humectants and lipids. It has the skin barrier therapy patient, which protects skin from irritating bacteria. One of the things I really like about this is even though it's so good for sensitive skin, it still foams up. I really like foam because it's easier to distribute and rinse off, and so this gives you the option for foam while still being really, really gentle. Another brand I really love is QV. It's a bit like the Australian version of CeraVe. I love that they have really large pack sizes, they're really budget friendly, and they have these handy pump bottles. This range is really skin friendly, really gentle. It's actually supported by the Eczema Association of Australia. So if you're into hyaluronic acid, I have to mention the hyaluronic concentrate from Desium's chemistry brand. This is one of their CEO Nicola's favourite products, and it's basically just a pump of goo. It has a really nice pump dispenser. This is like a sure way to win me over, having a really handy pump dispenser, and this just pumps straight down, which is really nice. This goes for your face as well, but I find it more important for your body. When you're using humectant moisturisers, they really shine when you put occluses and emollients on top. So a more creamy moisturiser, not just a straight up water-based humectant moisturiser. And having that combination of different types of moisturisers really helps hydrate your skin on multiple levels and lock it in. I've also been using the Ten Balm Body Lotion from Indeed Labs over winter. This is just a really nicely formulated body lotion. It works really well at locking in the humectants. There are also some products that aren't specifically made for your body, but they're in pretty big pack sizes and they're reasonably priced. So there's the Ordinary's Glycolic Acid 7% Toning Solution and Pixi's Glow Tonic. These acids also double up really well as deodorants, so having a low pH in your armpits changes the ratio of bacteria that live there, and it's really the bacteria that causes the smell, so they feed off things in your sweat and turn that into the biochemicals. You're probably all going to laugh about how old this bottle is, but this is the Paula's Choice Clear Acne Body Spray that I've been refilling. This spray is really awesome if you get bacne because not only is it a spray, it actually sprays upside down. I'm sure other brands also have this, but this is actually the only one that I know of. One ingredient that I see in body products, but not in a lot of face products, and I wish there were more, is oatmeal. 
Oatmeal is in the Vena range and it's named after the Venthromize, which are these really good anti-inflammatory compounds in oats. It's the reason why oatmeal baths are really good for itchy body conditions like chickenpox and eczema. Now if you want to go really hardcore with actives on your body like you would with your face products, you can get more intense body products as well. This is from KGA Body, which is an Australian brand. It has Bacutiol 0.5%, retinol 0.2% and glycolic acid. Usually you only find this sort of thing with clinical brands and as you'd expect it comes with a clinical brand price tag. But if you work out what the price is per mil it still ends up being an okay price compared to face products. My next tip is to use face care products that didn't work on your face on your body. This is like if it broke you out or if you found a better product since then. It means that you don't waste all your money you can use it up quickly before it expires and chances are this will be like the most pampering your body's ever gotten. Body skin is generally more resilient than face skin, there's a few extra layers of dead skin cells in your stratum corneum there. Your body skin also can react to different things, so for example things that break out your face might not break out your body. If you did have a reaction on your face though, be really careful when you're using it on your body. Try to avoid sensitive areas and try to avoid broken skin. Now let's talk about how to do the different steps of your routine on your body. You don't need to cleanse your arms and legs really, really thoroughly. This is official dermatologist advice, check out Derm Angelo if you haven't already. Now you should still be cleansing your smelly bits like your groin and your armpits. And if you get back acne, you should still be cleansing your back, especially if you use hair conditioner. With heavier conditioners, these can clog up your pores. And you should still be cleansing your skin if it's dirty, so don't say, oh, Michelle said I didn't have to clean my skin after like tough mutter. If you have a job where full body hygiene is really important, like if you work in a P4 lab, this doesn't apply to you. And obviously we should still be washing our hands really thoroughly. But for most of us, most of the time, we don't have to scrub and scrub our arms and legs until they're squeaky clean. You are probably doing more harm than good. Along the same lines, you shouldn't be showering for too long with too hot water. Now I know it's really nice to have a hot shower sometimes, and I still do it, but just know that having that hot shower, having all that water flowing over your skin, is getting rid of your skin's natural moisturizing factor, the natural humectants in your skin. This is actually one of the big causes of upper back itch in winter. People are having showers and that hot water is just thumping into the upper back. Now for exfoliating your body, you can exfoliate your body just like you do for your face with the same precautions. Body skin is a bit tougher, it's a bit thicker than face skin with a few extra layers of dead skin cells, so that means it's a bit harder to over exfoliate your body, but it can still happen. The thicker skin also means that you get more ingrown hairs and you can get keratosis pilaris or chicken skin. This is when the dead skin cells block off the hair follicle. To deal with this the best way is to exfoliate and moisturize because when your skin is really dry it doesn't exfoliate itself as well. As well as the chemical exfoliants I talked about before, like glycolic acid that you use on your face, there's also urea. Urea shows up in some face products, but it's a lot more common in body products, and it's really good for exfoliating and moisturizing, especially if you have cracked hands or cracked heels. You can also use a lot of physical exfoliants, so you can use scrubs for example. This is one of my favorites, it's the Smoothie Star Breakfast Scrub from Soap & Glory. It smells like maple syrup. You can also make a really effective DIY scrub just by mixing a bit of sugar or salt with oil. You can also use tools like body mitts, this is one from Face Halo and you can use it wet or dry. When it's dry it's a little bit more efficient if you're trying to really get into a rough patch. When it's wet it's a lot more gentler and so that's better for overall areas on your body. There are also exfoliating towels and these are a lot more popular in Asia. This is one that I got from Innisfree, I've also got one from Daiso which is really good and there's a really popular one called the Italy towel. The thing I really like about these is that it's really good for scrubbing your back and this is really important if you have long hair like me where you use lots and lots of hair conditioner and that hair conditioner tends to clog your pores. The important thing with these tools is that you need to make sure you let them dry properly in between uses. Because it's damp and it's probably got some of your body products in it and it's also got your dead skin cells, this is a really good breeding ground for bacteria mold. So make sure you rinse these properly and let them dry properly, so take them out of your shower, maybe even out of your bathroom in between uses. Otherwise, if you're using the dirty tool and you're scrubbing it into your skin, you can actually introduce the bacteria mold into your skin and that leads to infections. It's really gross. There are case studies on it. So that's one of the reasons I switched from a sponge on a stick to a body towel for my back, because with the body towel it's a lot easier to unravel it and rinse it out properly and then also let it dry out a lot faster. Now on the exfoliation topic, dark armpits and knees are normal. You are not necessarily meant to be the same color all over. 
This is a Eurocentric beauty standard. You have more skin where it's folded, so your knees, your armpits, your elbows, and more skin means more melanin, and that's why you have a darker patch there. If you have rough, hardened skin or dry, scaly patches, then exfoliating and moisturizing can help with that, and yes, your skin might get a bit lighter, but if you're a person of color, you're not necessarily meant to have the same color skin all over. If your skin's in a healthy condition and it's symmetrical, then it is normal to have fluctuations in color. There are a few conditions where it isn't normal and it's a reflection of an underlying health issue. And if that's the case, you should get it checked out. But otherwise, it's just another unrealistic beauty standard. I know if you just start Googling dark armpits and dark knees and dark elbows or whatever, you end up with all these scary health conditions, but that's just a reflection of how the medical system just doesn't quite have enough info on skin of color. So let's move on to moisturizing. The best time to apply body moisturizer is right after you step out of the shower when your skin is still damp. When your skin is wet, it's most likely to dry out, and so you want to get moisturizer on there as quickly as you can. It's also really good to seal in that extra moisture and so that humectant can grab onto extra water. It's also a good idea to track your moles, especially if you have lighter skin or if you get a lot of sun exposure. There's a really good acronym for spotting suspicious moles, it's ABCDE. So if you have a mole that's asymmetric with a fuzzy border, if it's got uneven color, if it's bigger than a pencil eraser, or if it's been changing in appearance, then these are all features that you should get checked out. So you should go to a doctor and ask them to look at your mole and maybe take a biopsy. In Australia, it's recommended that you have an annual all over body mole check, and usually your GP can do this. There are apps that can help you track moles and these can be really useful, but don't rely on them 100% because it's still pretty new technology. It doesn't necessarily work for all sorts of cancerous moles or all skin types. For your body, of course, we also need to talk about sun protection. This is especially the case if you're exfoliating with alpha hydroxy acids, which can make your skin more sensitive to the sun, or if you're using really expensive anti-aging actives on your skin. It's a waste of money if you're not also protecting your skin from further damage. So check the UV index to see if you need to protect your skin. I have another video on UPF clothing and how to pick normal clothes that protect you from UV. If you're using sunscreen, make sure you use enough. So the recommendation is one teaspoon for the front of your torso, one for the back of your torso, one for each limb, and one for your face and ears and neck. So I hope you found this video useful. Share your best body tips in the comments. If you liked it, you can click the like and subscribe for more videos like this. You can follow me on Instagram at Lab Muffin Beauty Science and check out my blog for more nerdy beauty content. See you next time.